What's up, everybody? We're back again with another episode of Vetted with Irving Fryer and Hollis Thomas. I'm Irving. That's Hollis, the one that says, damn, Skippy. That's my dude right there. (laughs) Damn, Skippy. (laughs) Hollis, go ahead. Do your thing. Well, uh, I actually wrote something down this week. Hold on a second here. You wrote it down this week? Yeah, I wrote wrote a a whole spiel for the the people. Because I was thinking, I was was, was thinking, I was like, what do the people... uh, what do the what do they want to hear? What do they want to know about? I was like, okay, Hollis Thomas, Philly Sports Trips here. Ah, let's go party and support the birds. And I, I know everybody wants to go on trips, uh, you know, this season that's coming up. And everybody's excited because we made it to the Super Bowl, but we came up short. So you know what you do? You go get on phillysportstrips.com, book one. Not maybe even book two of, 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 of some of the best trips known to man. We stay at the best hotels and we have some of the finest foods and we have some of the greatest times known to man. And hell, you may even see a legend or two. You're definitely going to see me, Hollis Thomas, the tank. And hi, my, my daughter may think, think I forgot about her supporting my shirts. Thank you. Uh, idea. She put out the whole a whole display for phillysportshirts.com. So go to phillysportshirts.com and copy a damn Skippy t-shirt. And hell, I might even sign it on one of phillysportstrips.com. So go to phillysportstrips.com and book a trip. And then you catch myself and possibly another legend or two. And uh, phillysportshirts.com and get you a damn Skippy t-shirt. And tell them that you heard it on A2D Radio. And tell them that the tank sent you. <laughs> that's good stuff man <laughs> listen next week when we come on we gotta wear our damn skippy shirts all okay. right all right you wear yours i got one thank you for the okay. gift no uh problem. what's going on quentin we see you <laughs> oh, <I'm not laughs> here. you're right breaking news just happened a little while ago yes 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 james <laughs> harden yes that's he, what, what? Uh, he opted in to the yes. one year 35.6 million dollar deal with a trade option so He's out of here. You know what? That's the best news I've heard all week long. I'm just sick and tired of James Harden. He really needs to get out of here. He uh, he is not an asset to the Sixers. They were talking about, you know, everybody was talking about, well, no, he needs to opt out. And then they need to sign him to a three-year, not a four-year deal, but a three-year deal and give him about $150 million, make no. him happy. What kind of crap is that? No. Can you imagine the Sixers? Three years now with James Harden on the team, the and team what, uh, would continually go backwards from this moment forward. But now he's out, and right now he literally <laughs> is trade material, yes. and someone is foolish enough to give us something significant, whether it's a trade, whether it's a draft pick, whether it's a player, whether it's money, whatever it is, somebody's foolish enough to give us something significant for him. So I'm glad he's out. Bye bye, Harden. Yeah. Get you behind out of here so we can move forward as Sixers. What do you yeah. think, that big dog? Uh, you know what? And when you said you, know, I was holding my tongue because when you said, "Don't hold your tongue," that's well, not, not what we do. Well, no, nah, I was let, I was letting you finish because when you said make make him happy, I'm like, damn him. What about the fans that's paying all their money to go, come and see the game? But that's, that's see- what everybody was saying. Make yeah. it all the all the sports analysis, all the sports yeah. shows. They were like, "Got to make him happy. No. Give him 150 million for three years." No, forget him. No. You know what? And then he needs he needs to win some games. He needs to quit disappear. He disappeared in the in the uh, final game seven. I still he didn't disappear. Day, he quit. He quit. Yeah, that, that too. On Mother's Day, it, w- it was the worst Mother's Day that I've ever been a part of. <laughs> I was the only one down in Chicago with donning a 76ers warm up. I had on the 76ers warm up. Like, yeah, we about to handle business. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there with my mom. She's like, you could, my mom oh. said, you about to be embarrassed. And I was like, I was like, nah, the six is gonna handle the six is gonna handle it. They're gonna handle it. First quarter, no. okay, okay. Second quarter, okay. Third quarter. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Oh uh, and, and I didn't bring and I had and I didn't bring a change of clothes. I didn't bring a change of clothes either. <laughs> so I had to die, I had to don I had to don the losers of pearl. And it's like, but I, I don't have no problem donning my colors, but at least uh, the way we lost. Uh-huh. And the way we were losing, like the way we were losing, sometimes, and they, some some people blamed it on uh, Doc Rivers. I think he, I think he, I, I don't feel sorry for him because he got us the exact same place each time. If I'm going down, I'm going down fighting. If you gonna you gonna play? I'm, everybody's gonna know that you don't want to play because I'm gonna, I'm gonna put your ass on the on the on the on the list to play. I was like, I don't, I, don't, I can't get with this, this newfangled crap 
uh, with uh, not not playing and stuff because you don't want to. Um, you know what? I don't I don't buy into here. Here's here's my train of thought. You know, a lot of people will, um, you know, against the against the when they lost that last series right. this year, um, they said Doc didn't make the right adjustments. So some of it was Doc's fault as a coach. OK, to a certain extent. But I don't buy into that as much as most people buy into it with regards to putting blame on a coach when it comes to basketball, right. because there's only five guys out there. It's, it's not 11 guys. It's not as intricate as as football is. You got five guys out there and it's and, and it's basically one on one when you get out. There's only so much you can do or so much you can't do when it comes. There's only five guys out there and it's one on one. Beat your guy. Cover your guy. Defend your guy. Don't allow him to score. Don't and, and score on him. That's basically what it is. So when it comes to coaching in the NBA or coaching in basketball, it's not as difficult and not as intricate as it is in football. So, yes, maybe a little bit uh, of blame goes to Doc, but most of it falls on the players because Doc can't make players play. Exactly. Doc can't infuse enthusiasm in the players. Doc can't infuse his will and his desire and his ability to persevere into players. And when I see James Harden, the body when language. I watched him, yeah, in the playoffs, the body particularly language, his yeah. last few games, his body language just sucked. I, I wouldn't want to be his teammate because he would be dragging me down. I wouldn't look at him because it would be something. Uh, it was a be. It would be negative, negative energy, yeah. and I would have to say something to him. I'm like, you know, you're supposed to give your all when it comes to nut cutting time, mm -hmm. and it's 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 win or go home. You gotta you gotta be diving for the ball. You gotta give energy and leave everything and all things on the court. Yeah. And I just didn't get that from James Harden. Yeah. He would miss a shot. He would get fouled. You see him not running down, playing right. defense. He'd be way back there on the offense, yeah. offensive side oh, of the ball, God, complaining man. to the ref. This is the playoff, dude. Yeah. Get your behind up and get down there and play defense, get the ball back, come down and score. Yeah. It just he, – he's not – he. I didn't want him to come here to the Eagles and – I mean the Eagles. To the Sixers. You didn't want him to come to the Sixers. Also say to the Sixers in the first place, but when he came, huh? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. You good? He was a problem. Yeah. Or the Nets. I'm sorry, the Nets. He was a problem. They had too many stars up there anyway. They couldn't <laughs> get along. Yeah, but he was a good. problem up at the Nets. Yeah. And uh, and if the Sixers didn't realize that, didn't see that, and they brought him in, he did the same thing here that he was doing up there. Listen, if he quit on Houston, he quit on the Nets. He'll quit on the Sixers like he's quitting on the Sixers right now. Yeah. He opted in because he wants out of here yeah. because he doesn't want to feel the pressure of having to give your all and play. <laughs> if he would give his all and give energy and effort and 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 do the best that he can, people wouldn't have a problem with him. They yeah. wouldn't. Not, not the Philly fans. That's all we want you to do is to give effort, to try Big hard. Time. Don't blame somebody else, but own up to your own mistakes and do the best you can. If you do that, People don't have a problem with Tobias Harris because he does the best that he can. Yeah, yeah. and then, you know the funny, the funny thing was every everybody was talking about uh, trading and trading and trading them, and um, I just I just felt like and it, uh, me and my brother Pops uh, was probably watching. <clears throat> we were talking about this. We were like, uh, he never got a, you. You don't know what type of opportunity he got to uh, because of, because of what they were doing uh, with uh, Embiid and um, and um, and James Harden. And uh -huh. it's like it's like you never you at times he would take over the game and attack. I that's the that's the Tobias Harris I like to see. That's the guy who I think that they think he is, but he has right. yet to give us a consistent or consistent basis. So I can't really stand in his corner because he's been an inconsistent player. So he's good, but he's not great. He hasn't made that great leap. So but he, you, go ahead. No, but that's Tobias Harris. <laughs> Tobias right. Harris is not your guy that's gonna take you to a championship. Yeah. He's, he's, a, got, he's, he's getting he's, paid like like he's like he's one of the guys, one of the three guys to take you to the championship. Well, they're all getting paid like no, that. No, they're no. all getting paid. <laughs> well, no, well, no, it's like when they but, when they were, when they were looking, it's like, and then what's what's lost in all this, and uh, another reason why I think that uh, a lot of the masses is happy are happy is because that it takes the vices off of uh, of a Tyrese Maxey. I was like, you see, you see that kid go out there and do what he do, and he keeps having to go back to the bench. And, and do that stuff is like, come on, man. Yeah, and you, you and, gotta turn that kid loose. 
And speaking of Maxie, I, I don't understand. I mean, he was in Kentucky. He was balling yeah. at Kentucky. And then he comes into the league and he's like, he's like, to me, he's, he's an average player, maybe just above average, but he should know. be, to me, really he should didn't. be doing more than what he, in terms of scoring. I don't know what you, defense. Well, that he has to be on the, he has to be on the court to do that. Right. He does he's, have to be on the court. He's, take, I'm not he's, sure. take, he's taking over, the, he's taking over some games. See, I, I see, I have the caveat of watching all, all the games and uh -huh. seeing how they're, sporadically playing him he did have an injury this year but he's take he's say he's take when he when they put him in there and they let him go and then the one thing i did like about james harden was he told him he told uh tyrese maxi take over he was like when he like when he first from from the time he got here mm -hmm. you can see him tell him take over this will be your team that's the one thing that I, I do commend him on other than that he could go on and fornicate himself and, and maxi can do that based yeah. on what i've seen him do in college uh, he's still young, still a baby in the league, um, right. and he has the capabilities of being a star in this league. But the times I went, times and you were watching, but the times I watched him, oh, you went out, big dog. The times I watched <laughs> Maxi, am I still, am I still um, he just kind of just almost even looked lost. Yeah, you're still, I got you back. Okay. He he almost looked lost at times, like he couldn't. He was trying to feel his way in in where to try to fit in between Joel and B wanting the ball, between James Harden dribbling the ball all over the place and then, you know, <laughs> doing what he does. He, he was trying to fit in. It was almost like when James Harden came in, it kind of threw Maxi off in terms of, of, of the role that he was playing before Harden got there. So, uh, again, I think it's going to clear things up for the Sixers. They have an opportunity, hopefully, maybe, possibly, prayerfully, Lillard will be a part of the picture coming moving forward. Um, because listen, they bring Lillard in here. It's Wait, it's it's really, a, we are a formidable <laughs> contender yes. for the championship. But he but he, you had to you had to give up too much, I think, for Lillard. I think the the kid uh out of that was uh, a free agent from Toronto, uh -huh. he, he comes in the, he comes into play. Uh, uh well, okay, now, what would you give up for Lillard? I know I know we're uh I know we're, we're 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 not supposed to be talking about this, but what would you give up to get Lillard? Because Lil, listen, Lillard is a sniper. Yeah, that he's cat a, he's a killer. He's an assassin. He's a killer. He's yeah. an assassin. He he's a guy that you want the ball in his hands with three seconds left on the clock, and we got to make it to win it. He's so, gonna make it. That so cat what, is awesome. Uh, <laughs> which guy? So you know what? I don't know. I don't know what I. I would give up. I give up. I give up Maxi for him. I wouldn't. I couldn't. I, no. I would. No, we're not. Because little is in I, his thirties. I don't. I don't know. You don't know what you're gonna get. You don't we're know trying you're to win. Get I'm sure they're trying to win now. Aren't you trying sure to win they, now? Sure. Do, I mean, how, how much of a window do you have with Joel and B? What, so like you, four years, maybe? So you're gonna get rid of a, a super duper? I mean, you, what you gonna you you gonna keep Tobias? Well, yeah, you would keep Tobias. Give up Maxi. Well, give up Tobias. I give up Tobias. I give up Tobias you would, you and would, James Harden. But now you would actually, you would have to give up. You would, you would have to give up Maxi because him and Lillard kind of play the same position. So right. But I'm saying I would give up Tobias Harris and James Harden for Lillard, okay. for sure. You know what's coming up though? A commercial's coming up. Ah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, <laughs> we got a commercial, y'all. <laughs> Go ahead, and hit it, Ralph. Hey, Birds fans, the NFL schedule has arrived and Philly Sports Trips has all the details now. Visit the site phillysportstrips.com. This is sure to be an epic season. Be sure to go there now to make sure that you don't get shut out. Join us in Tampa, L.A., Seattle, or when we get revenge in Kansas City. Don't want to fly? No problem. Gather up your crew and hop aboard one of our signature boisterous bus trips to D.C. or New York. Sign up now and make sure to mention A. 2D. Don't miss out on the best Philly fan experience anywhere. Philly sports trip customers always stay at the best hotels and meet NFL legends. Book today. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at my, my chat here. I just messed it up. It just it got me upset. I, <laughs> I, I, oh, what did I do? I Marcus know. Thomas said uh, from Philly fan talk, Philly pro talk. I'm right. sorry, Marcus, I'm messing up your show. The name of your show, but you got me jacked up. You got you got me <laughs> twisted right now. You said to keep him. Which who who keep who? Oh my uh, gosh! I gotta yeah. get this. I gotta get this back on my 
my thing right here. <laughs> oh, your screen? Yeah, my screen. Yeah, yeah, I messed it up, man. <laughs> Basically, so uh, Marcus said... Uh, well, yeah, what did he say? I'm trying to get the screen back right. He said, he said keep him and let uh, Nick Nurse deal with him for a year. And, no, and, what, and no, now, no, 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 Marcus. Now, we, we still have to... Somebody has already asked about the agree to disagree question. What was, okay. your, agree to, what was the, your agree to disagree question? The agree to disagree question. Dang, I need to see the comments. I messed up my thing right here, man. Shoot. <laughs> Doggone it. All right, let me get a, get this out of here. The agree to disagree comment, uh, question or statement is this, that Jalen Hurts will be the uh, NFL MVP in 2023. Do you agree or do you disagree? Well, that, that all rhymes. That all rhymes. Jalen Hurts... <laughs> Will be the NFL MVP in 2023. Boy, that rhymes. Do you agree <laughs> or do you disagree? Who who commented on that? Uh, somebody somebody asked what the degree to disagree question. What uh-huh. was it? So, uh, oh, there it is. I'm going again. Okay, now I got him back. So, okay. Pro Fan Talk said. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, he said keep Pro Fan. Okay, I got you. I got you, Marcus. Mm. Okay, I thought you meant keep um, James Harden. He said, okay. "Keep Tobias and let okay. Nurse deal with him." Yeah, I, I want Harden out of here. I, Tobias can stay. Yeah, uh, Maxi can stay. Mm-hmm. Joel and B can stay. We need to work on Joel and B. Get him down in the paint. Stay in the paint a little bit more. Stop worrying so much about being the MVP. Get down there and help your team win the championship. Be the monster that you can be. The dominant fact uh, figure that you can be. Down in the paint. Have a conversation with Shaq. Have Shaq teach you how to be a big man because you are a big man like Shaq. And Shaq never took any three-point shots. But Shaq is one of the greatest NBA centers to ever put his feet on the court. I have and a Shaq- question. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm think, going off. No, do you think Shaq would have hit a three-point shot? You think what? Do you think Shaq would have hit a three-point shot? No, he wouldn't hit. He couldn't hit a free throw. <laughs> but but that's not my point. My point is that's not my point. I know so Joel and B can do all of that. You should have said Hakeem Olajuwon. Well, Hakeem Olajuwon too. But but but, he, but, but even but, 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 Hakeem Olajuwon couldn't shoot the three like like no, Joel and B can. I, I know, but he had the form and stuff and the soft touch. Yeah, but just but just because you can, that don't mean you should. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah, oh. just because you can do it. That don't mean that's cool. Okay, fine. You can shoot three point player, uh, three point shots. That's great. Wonderful. You can dribble. You shouldn't be dribbling because every time I see you dribble, they take the ball from you. That's wonderful. Like they do, but big that guys. doesn't mean <laughs> you should be doing it. You're seven foot pounds. Get down in the paint. Get the ball dropped down to you. Back step. Whoever gets in the way gets the hand broken. Period. Dunk the ball. That's what Shaq used to do. Cat, Shaq had cats jumping out of the way because they knew what was coming when he backstepped, when he drop stepped and turned towards the basket. He was dunking, and he was dunking with force. Interesting. And they get out of the way. How about uh, we talk about some football? Okay. <laughs> I know they. I know the. I know the. the uh, I know him opting in and us being able to trade him. It, it, it riled us up pretty good. Well, it was, it was breaking news, so we had yeah. to talk about it. We you know, about, we Marcus has his show on a little bit later on the day. We wanted to get to it before Marcus. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. Yeah. Want to want to be the breaking news? Yeah, we do the breaking news thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no pun intended, Marcus. We all right. We good. We close. We good, man. <laughs> I love you, brother. Um. So so we want to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about our, our top five today, our top five uh, quarterbacks that play for the Eagles. Top five greatest Eagles quarterbacks. Hollis and I are going to go over that today. If we get a chance, we're going to talk about Andy Reid and his influence uh, as a head coach on the Eagles organization. Let's Is that influence Does that influence still exist today Let's in their wanna, success? How about we start off with that to get that out of the way? <laughs> okay let's say all right i wasn't i, I, I was going backwards okay we're going to talk about big dog wants to talk about andy Reed. apparently this is going to be short but big dog wants to talk about andy reed now i didn't play for andy reed but um mm-hmm. he's been been in the league as a head coach now for 24 years yeah. uh 14 years with the eagles 10 years with the chiefs yeah. and he has a phenomenal record uh in terms of wins and losses, you know, with the Eagles, he was, uh, he had 20, 224 games yeah. in 14 years. Amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. 130 wins, 93 losses. He was 10 of nine in the playoffs or 10 for nine. 10 wins, 10 losses. Mm-hmm. 10, 10 of 19. 10 right. wins, nine losses in the playoffs while he was at the Eagles. Then he's 117 and 45, which is phenomenal. 117 wins, 45 with the Chiefs in 10 years and 12 and seven, 12 wins, seven losses in the playoffs. So a total of this is two, this is crazy. Two, yeah. he must, he's got to be like one of the best coaches in the history he's of the NFL. One, I mean, he, 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 he's one of the luckiest, I'll tell you that. Oh, Lord. Okay, we're going to get into that. But he got 247 wins, 138 losses. Yeah. He is 22 and 16 in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. He's He's got, he's got like, 11 disciples that have been head coaches or that either are some are still I, I, head I, coaches, I, some I, like I, uh, Todd Bowles, Todd, Todd Bowles, Doug Peterson, Ron Rivera, Leslie Frazier, John Harbaugh, Sean not Harbaugh, uh, not Harbaugh. Mc, Harbaugh is under uh, Ray Rhodes. You remember John Harbaugh? Harbaugh? Harbaugh was here with us, but he came from he came from, here with us, right? <laughs> he came here with us and Ray, but Rhodes. he was there, but he played he came, under he he, came, he, came, he started coaching <laughs> under Ray Rhodes as our. As our special teams coach, right? Yeah, we used to call him Harbaugh. I remember. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I was here with him. And and and, and Juan Castillas came in with and with, Juan. With, did, I didn't. I didn't say Juan. I didn't say mm-hmm. Sean McDermott with the Bills. Now Sean McDermott. He, Sean McDermott was here <laughs> with Ray. Continue. That's like, because it, it's like do it's, I do I do I wait 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 do I sense? I don't like somebody and, that lies and, to me. I don't do, like somebody do that I lies sense, to me. Do I sense an issue with 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 Andy Reid? There's no issue, but I'm not going to kiss. It. It's like it's like this is what I this is what I learned, and this is what it, and this is the uh, the seedy part of the NFL. This is what you learned. You learned okay. it. They push you out. Oh yeah, you know, I learned that. Of course, yeah, so it's like and I was young when I saw that. I was like, but but the uh, older guys is like it's like stick. You know, if you stick around long enough, that'll be you too. So so what but, so what was your experience? Because from the outside, I never played yeah, for Andy. I know. I, I, my last year at the Eagles or with the Eagles was with Ray Rhodes. Okay. Then Andy came right after that. Yeah. Um. So uh. And that, so now I, the first I was thing, watching. I was looking from the outside yeah. in. Obviously, I was watching him for a couple of years. Right. So I played against Andy for a couple of years. But at the same time, I really, at that time, I wasn't playing right. or paying attention to football and really didn't have my mind focused on that. I was doing some other things. But um, so so what I is it, it with I Andy? Because he well, seems to be, in yeah, my whatever. opinion, yeah, okay. just my opinion, okay. he seems to be an excellent head coach. And he seems and he seems to have organizer. had he seems to have had put the Philadelphia Eagles, in my opinion, on the right track, even with Laurie and Joe Banner at the time, mm-hmm. um, helped them to understand how to get a team <laughs> together and how to 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 get the right kind of players on a team and no. how to manage a team, how to own a team, how to, how to run an NFL, NFL team at a, mm-hmm. at a level that that team can be successful mm-hmm. over time at a high level mm-hmm. continually. Yeah. I will let you know that most of what, <laughs> when he got here, most of the defense, the vaunted defense that everybody was talking about was already here via Ray Rhodes. Ray Rhodes told uh, told them to hire Andy because he was extremely organized. And he's, he's that's what he is. He's great at, at organization. He's great at organizational mm-hmm. skills and keeping people on schedule and stuff. Now, when you put him in the in the situations that we were in quite a bit of times on the field, uh, offensively, mm, if you're supposed to be an offensive coach, why are we losing games six to three? We lost six to three to the to the Green Bay Packers. Hello, hello. We lost six to three when they had Brett Favre. That's where he six came from, the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, Maybe no, he was. He, we we held Brett Favre to six points though, two field goals, not a touchdown. Mm-hmm. So when when the when when you when you think about it, he he's walked into it's like, and I don't I think he's I think he's a tremendously good coach, and I don't I don't take any I, I but I do think that a lot of people kiss his ass for unnecessary reasons. You don't and like then, that, huh? No, no, because it's like you you know that myself, the, me me Dawkins. Trey Thomas was already here. Uh, Hugh Douglas was already here. Jeremiah Trotter was already here. Mm-hmm. Uh, hell, uh, uh, Br- I know you remember Brandon Whiting was already here. Yeah, uh, White. All of, the defense was here, and most right. uh, most of the offensive line was here. They they used up Deuce Staley, then shipped him out. 
Right, and he his offense never his offense what the way he was called offenses when people came and hit him in the mouth we we had to come back against the Pittsburgh Steelers at Three Rivers Stadium because the score was ten to three, ten mm-hmm. to three. Mm-hmm. We end up winning in the end by running Stutter Stanley Pritchard because he wants to pass. Now, the some some of the uh, the offense guys he take he took care of a lot of the offense guys and they loved him for it, but defensively. We wanted to whoop his ass like a like 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 <laughs> and this is it's like it is 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 he because he lied to you he tells you he and the one thing that I think he taught uh, and I, and I will commend Howie on this uh-huh. uh, the one thing that I think he taught the organization was the head coach is not supposed to be the GM too because you can't lie to your players talk about how much you need them but you're not paying them like you need them right, you can't be right. part of the the contract talk it can't be us versus them. It's mm-hmm. like when you say us versus them, you're a part of them too. You're just a, you're you're a spy. So if you can't. That's that's where that's why a lot of people, and well, not a lot of people, a lot of people kiss his ass and stuff. I refuse to because you lie both, both face lie to my face. So so why do? Because I mean, again, he was as far as wins and losses, you can't argue with 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 the wins and losses that he I just told, was able I just, to accumulate I while said, he was okay, here. Seventeen so we'll years, yeah, six of those seventeen years. You guys won the NFC East. You uh, six of six. Of, I know that wasn't a lot, but six of those fourteen years. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh no, we were in the playoffs and stuff at the end. I think you were, won the NFC East. I think it was second, maybe three out of those that he was here. Hey, Why we, is it that people have a a problem with with Andy Reid and because, what he was what he was doing? It's, it's the way he was. It's the way you treat people. It's like you like. <laughs> it's like. Uh, so Joe why is he so successful now? Joe Jared Vicious is still running. Because they, they, in they, Kansas City, they've been, they he's been there ten years. They've been they won the uh, AFC West seven of those ten years. Yeah, and then and then and then when did he start? When, he, when did he start really winning? There's a certain coordinator that's no longer there. Yeah, offense. Bienemy, Eric Bienemy. That's what and, and we'll and we'll see this year if that was really the caveat in what he was well, doing because well, he doesn't Doug, have Bienemy well, anymore. Well, well, Doug Peterson was his offense coordinator when they was losing. Right, right, and then Bienemy came in. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you know, and I think I do have a read here about Philly sports trips, and uh, and I yep, you do have a read. Yep, I know. You read. Uh, <laughs> you saw it too. Yeah, I saw. I saw it up there. The private Good. chat. You know, Good. So do your thing, bro. It's like Hollis Thomas here for Philly sports trips dot com. And the Eagles schedule out, and I know if you're anything like any of the other Eagles fans, you're looking at the away games that you can attend. Well, you can take, you can leave all the worry to us, and you can just sign up with us and let it give it. Not just give us your money; we'll take your money and put, and put it to good use. <laughs> Quality flights, <laughs> the best hotels, a tremendous menu, and you'll be able to hang with some legends like myself and some other other choice people. If you look at the list uh, at the list on phillysportstrips.com, we also we also do. Uh, uh, what what else do we do? Oh yeah, to tell have a good that, time. You have a, a tremendous time. We have a tremendous time. I, I was trying to keep from saying motel, but because it's hotel, because motel <laughs> motel means something else. But Philly Sports dot What does motel mean? Means uh, you pay by the minute. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and that's not what it means. Go ahead, finish your, finish your read, bro. <laughs> and. Uh, but now, Philly Sports Trips is a is a great establishment. We do we have the best trips and some of the greatest people. We have the greatest fan experiences and on demand. Uh, I'm going on the, the LA trip should be awesome. Hey, try the Tampa trip. The Tampa trip is, is going to be a tremendous time. We're going to this place called Crush, and we're going to crush it. Actually, the best thing the best thing about the uh, Philly Sports Trips is you you're there with Eagles fans having a great time supporting the birds. So go check out phillysportstrips.com. Tell them that you heard it on A2D Radio. And also, go get yourself a damn Skippy T-shirt or hoodie on phillysportshirts.com. Now, you, you froze that time. I did, that I, wasn't you. That was. I did. I paused yeah. the station identification. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. So, listen, let's get into the quarterbacks real quick. We finished Andy Reid. We're well, done with well, Andy Reid, all right? Well, 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 the, oh, you got uh, something else to say? Well, no. I just found that the, the part that I, I don't think that um, – that I don't think got, uh, got to the people was that you can't treat people like crap and then think that you're going to win. At time in and time out – 
they would talk, mess with guys with their contracts. If you didn't, if you didn't bow to what they were saying or, or do what they asked you to do as far as contractor wise, and uh, and then signing what they want you to sign, you know, it was like they it was, it, they were saying it was the system. Um, if 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 he was not going to say anything about it, right? I mean, he, lo- he he says he loves Andy, but the contract they offered him after they after they duped him after they duped him into not getting that tenth sack, so this mm-hmm. contract would be null and void that next year. Right. They they used them up and then offered him bull bull crap, and then they, I'm talking about complete crap. And it's right. like I think that how he how he was young around those times, he was Joe Banner's assistant. How he knew what he saw what was happening, and now you don't you don't hear a single bad thing about the organization now. Well, yeah, changed and uh, how yeah. he's doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, and that's, that's are- what, But that's the that's the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to you can't right. treat your players like crap and expect them to go out there and want to run, run through a wall for them. You. But but you know what I think that changed over the years with all teams with the NFL as a whole. I think years ago. No 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 no. We were we were we were number one. We put it this who way. Who was number when one? Got, well, the Eagles were number one and treat people like crap. Well, the, no no. I'm were, I'm not saying they weren't. I'm not saying they no, didn't no, do I, what you're I, you're saying. I'm saying when, when that was something that that was something traded, that when you get traded somewhere and they tell you and they, and the guys who there he's like oh yeah. I went up to the Eagles and they tried to get me some crap, some crappy contract and kidnapped my wife and everything. Andy <laughs> Reid was eating off my plate and stuff. I was like, ah, oh. it's like, it's like, so it's like, so it's it what? And remember, I was a, I was a player rep, so I heard the stories. Right, right. <laughs> well, the Eagles, the Eagles, and like I said, in your opinion, or well, like I was going to say, in your opinion, they may have in your mind, uh, and not saying that what you're saying is not justified, but uh, yeah, they may have been the worst in terms of treating players uh and it, disrespectfully and it, you know, yeah and, and it, but that yeah. was going on all of my career with most teams you yeah. know particularly when you got to a certain point you got a little bit older then they would really treat you like dirt so yeah. i think that has changed somewhat um it's in changed the a lot yeah it's, it's, it's changed a lot and it's like yeah the one thing that i do i did like uh i like the uh Look, Jeff Lurie, because it's like he's he's letting the football guys be the football guys, and mm-hmm. then I, I you know I got a chance to I, I got a chance to talk to him. It, it, even when I was playing and stuff, he was always around. And the funniest thing that I, I heard I ever heard him say was, "We did the I don't know if you were at the um, it was the last time I saw I saw Concrete Charlie before he passed. Mm-hmm. It was we we had a, a alum that day that wanted to open practices at uh at Penn at the at the old stadium, and uh, and Jeff Lurie came up to him. He was mm-hmm. like, man. He saw all the old guys. He's like, where, where are my guys? And he was talking about us, the guys that he was talking about, you, me, all the guys that he, that he, you know, right. that he signed when he was there. Right. That's the, right. the one thing that I do know that he gives a damn about us. So, okay. All right. Well, let's talk about the quarterbacks. Yes. Yeah. I let you go with the quarterbacks because you gave it to me late, but I, I know who number one is uh, Nick Foles. <laughs> no, no, number one. Who said no? No, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go five. We're gonna we're gonna talk about our okay. five, okay. our top five Eagles' greatest quarterbacks. Who we think are the top five okay. Eagles' greatest quarterbacks? And we're gonna start with number five, and then we're gonna okay. go to number one. All right. Yeah. Who's, and who's my number my number five, my number five, and and <clears throat> the only reason he's number five, well, not the only reason. When I look at his stats. I did some research and whatnot. Now look at his stats. He's justifiably uh, up there in as far as the best quarterbacks for the time that he was with the Eagles. But in 32 games, he did a phenomenal job. 32 starts. He was unbelievable. And that's Nick Foles. He's number five, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. But but let me give you some stats with Nick mm-hmm. Foles. All right. Um, Eagles, he was with the Eagles from tw- uh, 2012 to 2014, then got cut and went to the Rams. That was Chip Kelly's doing. Uh, then he, he got traded, yeah. He, he, he let go, yeah, to the Rams. Then he came back 2017, 2018. Um, he was third pick with the Eagles in 12, uh, 2012 by, from Arizona. So he was he was one in six his rookie year, but he was the first rookie in NFL history. So when he got in there as a rookie, mm-hmm. he really was setting records mm-hmm. as a rookie. He was one in six in his starts as a rookie, but he but he was the uh the first rookie in NFL history to throw for 240 yards per game and have a 60% completion rate. Nobody had ever done that before. And obviously in the Super Bowl, he was 28 of 43 passes, 
at 373 yards, three but TDs, is- one interception. He caught one for he made record, made a record or set a record, caught one and threw for some. Know, I, only reason he should be number one is because he's the only Super Bowl MVP. Well, I was going to say that. Yeah, he's the only Super Bowl <laughs> MVP. He's, he's the Super Bowl champ, but I'm, I don't have him at one. I have him at five. But yeah, t- I, I mean, I but he's a- legitimate. Yeah. He, look, this, these are his stats. And that's because he's he's with the Eagles. He played 32 games. He in 32 well, he stuck, games. But well, he stunk everywhere else, though. Right. That's yeah, why he's five. <laughs> I, I, would, I would at least made him three because he got the MVP. No. And well, that's you. That's, that's you. Right. That's why we that's have right. this. That's why we're doing this. Okay. But check this out. He has the highest career passer rating in team history, 93.2. Highest single season passer rating in team history, uh, 119.2. That was in 2003. He's the right. ninth in franchise history in passing yards. That's 8,703. He's eighth in franchise history uh, in TD passes, 58. Did this in 32 games. Mm. Lowest interception percentage in a season in team history, 0.63. That was in 2013. Mm. Most yards passing in a game in team history, 471. That was on December 23rd. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, December 30, December 23rd, 19, uh, 2018 versus the Texans. Most touchdown passes in a game, which was seven. He did that on November 3rd, 2013 versus the Raiders. Yep, which tied a franchise. Game. Yeah, he tied a franchise and an NFL, NFL record. NFL record, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His and was, 27, taken out of the game, was taken out of that game early as well. Yeah. yeah. Yep. His 27 TDs and only two uh, interceptions in 2013 was the best touchdown interception ratio in NFL history at that time. His 100 and 19.2 passer rating in 2013 is third all time trailing only Aaron Rodgers, which was 122.5 rating in 2014, no 2011 and Peyton Manning 121.4 rating in 2004. Nick Foles is my fifth best Eagles quarterback in Eagles history. He's number five for me. And, 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 and he won the chance and he won the Super Bowl. Okay, I can I can go with that. Who's your fifth? I didn't really write them down. I was going off your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> remember yesterday? Remember yesterday? You said that we were gonna we we're gonna start talking bad about the uh, about Andy. So I got all hopped up. Yo, so you <laughs> you focused on Andy? You you know what you did when I said Andy Reid? You you were like, okay, yeah, good, yeah, you're good, good, good. Yeah, good so yeah, your attention yeah. went to Andy, and you forgot and, about and, the quarterback. Huh? Well, well, my, well, when it, when you look at when um. I go to number five. I, I was going to go with the guy. Um, you, you you said his name earlier from way back when. Who Tommy won, Thompson. Tommy Thompson. Yeah, uh, yeah. And all, only because it was a different era. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was, it was a different era. Now I had I had him at my uh, number five. So okay, like, when, okay. When you, well, at, I, when you think about that, I was like, I was like, I put him. I had him at number five because I was hedging on five or four. I, 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 but I had to put him at five because I really didn't see. You couldn't see any of his games. No, and we couldn't see in his games. And and you know what? I actually have Tommy Thompson on my list. He's not five, but he is four. Wow. I, and, and and because of his numbers, you know, we couldn't see him play. And there's a whole different era when you talk yeah. about football. But he won two championships. championships yeah, he won against, two championships. One, one against this Lombardi. Yeah, and he won them both in uh in incl- inclement weather. Yeah. The weather was bad. You know, that was when Con- football was really football. They have domes back then. And they didn't have artificial turf back then. They had yeah. crazy, you know, it was less than perfect grass. <laughs> <laughs> and it was cold. And, you know, they didn't have heaters on the sidelines. They had none of that. It was when, you know, football was real, real, real football. Now, as, did, we, now huh? as you're talking, uh, somebody was mentioning number 11 earlier. You don't have Carson Wentz on this list, do you? No, I don't. I was okay. there was somebody in the in the the posting there that was number okay. eleven. I didn't know if that was Tommy Thompson or not. Uh, <laughs> but 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 no, he and Tommy was an undrafted free agent. Yes, he signed with the Steelers. Came out of Tulsa. He's with the Eagles for ten years. He only played eight years, and when he played those eight years, he wasn't necessarily a starter. He was in and out. Mm-hmm. But he helped, and and he missed the. Uh, uh, 43, 1943, 1944 seasons because he was in the army, World War II. Mm. So, man, he, he just, he's a part time starter, 10,000 
240 yards, 90 TDs, 100 interceptions. That's not good. Nah, nah. <laughs> he had 90 TDs, 100 interceptions, nah. but that's not in the era of, of passing the ball. Yeah, passing the ball, yeah. yeah. But he led the Eagles to three but, straight but, NFL championships games in 47, 48, and 49. Yeah, but and the Eagles won the, and the Eagles won the championship in 48 and 49. It's still the 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 90 TDs and the 100 interceptions is still like <laughs> right, but again, he led them to two championships in a row. Was it was they they went in spite of him or because of him? <laughs> they went in because of him. 1948, 25 TD passes, 1949 completed uh 54 point. Remember, this is di- a different whole era. That's this is a whole era. different era of football. 1949, he completed 54.2 percent of his passes, 1727 yards, 16 TDs, 11 TDs, which and he led the NFL in passer rating and TD percentage for three years in a row. Three years yeah. in a row. But because of those two championships in a row, that's why I have him at number four. Okay. He wasn't a great passer, but it wasn't a passing league back then. And it was a whole – I mean, even the ball was not even shaped the way it's shaped now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you, what do you, the thing, the thing I, put, I put Nick Foles at number four because he's the MV, MVP. And he brought us our first Super Bowl. Our first Super Bowl. So, you know, we've been, we've been there. We've seen it. But, like, but it's like, but it, 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 hold on a second, it's because it, everybody, everybody always talks that uh, talks about just, him just being him just winning those those games. Right. It's like you got to remember he was a backup all year long. Right. He had got he had got ousted, and he had he had went he had went through the quarterback killer in Jeff Fisher, mm-hmm. and we we sent him there. He came mm-hmm. back and literally like I was uh we I was actually out at the I was out at the game in uh in uh in California. When I, in L.A. when they played the, the Rams out there, when uh, Carson Wentz got hurt. And uh, I had actually had, had – we had – because they had the uh, an alumni day at, mm-hmm. uh, on, their, on their Friday practice. Had right. in and out, breaking the whole shebang. I was eating with him and stuff. And I, I sit down and I was talking to him. And I was just talking to him about – because I wanted to know – because I, I, I know uh, I know I know Young. Um, what's the kid's name? Uh, Vince Young. And right. I, knew, I, knew what, I knew what Jeff Fisher did to Vince. And I just wanted to see was it universal. Mm-hmm. And he's a pretty much a quarterback killer, and he as I like, I just asked him was he a, a, a butthole, and he was yeah he's a he say I say you don't have to say it I know you're a man of God and stuff and you believe in the higher power I was like but uh, and so he gave me the proverbial nod and we just we talked about it and then at at that point like as soon as a uh, uh, Carson went down everybody was like oh we're done and I was working for WIP at the time I distinctly said we're gonna win it all. Mm-hmm. And it, you're a prophet. You're a I'm prophet. I'm not a prophet. It's just that it's just that talking. <laughs> it's just that talking to Nick that that time he had become, a, he like Jeff Fisher made him hate football, and he he left football for a high second, and he wanted to play again. And so right. he found right. a renewed love for the game, right. and so it was like one of those things where it's kind of like certain guys they just have it when it when it when it when it, when the pressure's on they just have it. And he's right. just he was right. just one of those guys, and it's like you everybody can say what they want that Carson would have let us do that. You don't know that the no, playoffs. No, no. Is, all of us know the playoffs is a different animal, right? And I was right. like, for him to come off the bench and do what he did, and then especially be Tom Brady, the mm-hmm. the the uh, the nag is not a goat. You're not yeah. a goat. If you got cheating scandals attached to your name. <laughs> That's when they were so, the, the, the height of that. Uh, yeah. They were, <laughs> yeah. They were well. No, they were, they were. They were. Well, they were trying to uh, debunk Spygate. Right. That's what right. they were trying to debunk Spygate. But he he went out there and he performed, and it was just like, and the 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 the, the weirdest thing about that whole time is like, so we were playing against some. Who was we playing against? Um, they, they, we, I was going. I was talking against Ross Tucker. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Ross Tucker brought up brought up a time when they when he was playing with Buffalo. And they were going to start J.P. Lostman over somebody else. I was like, no offense, uh, but Buffalo hasn't been anything since uh, since Jim Kelly left. Right. I was like, so your mm-hmm. the, your experience here is like you, y'all are lifetime losers. I was like, I, I was like, big dog. Can't. Wait, wait, big dog. Hold, hold that thought, man. We got a commercial okay. we have to play. All right, okay. hold that okay. thought. We're coming okay. back to you. All right. Okay. All right, Ralph. Hey, Birds fans, the NFL schedule has arrived and Philly Sports Trips has all the details now. Visit the site phillysportstrips.com. This is sure to be an 
epic season. Be sure to go there now to make sure that you don't get shut out. Join us in Tampa, LA, Seattle, or when we get revenge in Kansas City. Don't want to fly? No problem. Gather up your crew and hop aboard one of our signature boisterous bus trips to DC or New York. Sign up now and make sure to mention A2D. Don't miss out on the best Philly fan experience anywhere. Philly sports trip customers always stay at the best hotels and meet NFL legends. Book today. <laughs> Big dog, go ahead and finish your thought. Then I have something <laughs> I want to say about Foles. Then we'll move forward to the other quarterbacks. <laughs> okay. And we'll get but, out of here today. Yeah, what he, uh, well, well we, when I was talking to him, he was talking about the Buffalo Bills. And I was like, I was like, Ross, the Buffalo Bills hadn't really been to the playoffs since uh, Doug Flutie. <laughs> Doug Flutie had, you know, they they took uh, Rob Johnson and started started Rob Johnson instead of Doug Flutie, mm-hmm, and and, mm-hmm. it, and it kind of ruined everything. And I was like, and I was like, this is a whole different situation. We have the team to do what we need to do. I was like, and Nick Foles is the man to lead him. And mm-hmm. he, but if, but he kept talking. I was like, dude, I was like, you guys have never been anywhere. I was like, I spent 15 years in the league, 12 of them in the playoffs. Shut up. Like, you know. <laughs> Pro fan talk, talked about how, how Foles could have stayed healthy. Listen, Nick Foles was not effective any other place but here in Philadelphia. All the stars aligned, came into alignment, and everything fell in place for Nick Foles here, here in Philadelphia because wherever else he played, whenever else he played, outside of Philadelphia for another team, mm-hmm. he he was just not that good yeah, yeah. at all. He he did well. He did phenomenal. I yeah. mean, it was something about Doug's Peters, Doug Peterson's communication with him and how that flowed and his ability to interpret the off that in place. Uh, obviously, he was sitting and he, he was watching um, Carson Wentz during the time before Carson got hurt and when he got the opportunity to play. Foles came in and did a phenomenal job. He did. But outside of Philadelphia, you wouldn't even know he, he won a Super Bowl or that performed the way he did in that Super Bowl. Um, but he's he's my five guy. He's you know, fifth. You know, Thompson's you know. number four. And yeah. and yes, he ran and he, listen, he ran Carson Wentz out of Philadelphia. <laughs> well, well, you can't, you can't. The, the thing with Carson Wentz was he didn't want any competition. And you well, be- Car- well, he he exposed Carson Wentz's. A weak mindedness because Ooh. what happened to Carson, you know, everybody was wondering what happened to Carson. Carson didn't all of a sudden lose his talent or his ability to play. Everything in terms of a problem with Carson was between his ears, in his mind. The worst thing happened to Carson that could happen to a person who's weak minded. He was a starter, he was doing well, he was living off the cheers of the people. But when the criticism came, it killed him because he comes, he, he gets hurt. And then his backup comes in and does the ultimate takes the team mm-hmm. to a championship and wins the championship. Mm-hmm. Then Carson comes back and tries to live up to that, no. to try to match that. And he ended up getting in his own head. He ended up trying too hard, trying to do too much. And Not when he that. was, when he now, was making mistakes, yeah. he could not handle the criticism. No, He's but that minded. Yeah, but not not only that, it it caused him to play with uh, in, injury because he didn't well, want yeah. to get back on the bench. The thing, the thing, to me, the thing doing to too me much. Is, the thing to me is, and they don't do this to quarterbacks a lot. Uh, is is every we have it's it's a guy coming up for your position every year, all the time, and, and all the, the coaches, time. The coaches like him better because he's cheaper and younger. Right, it's like and it's, you, up to, you better, it's, up to, it's up to you to let them know that you better put that cheap stuff on the ground. <laughs> you better. Plus, you got to ball out. That's that's yeah, the reason I why my my when that, I sec- my put, third year at the Eagles, I played with that broken toe yeah, because that, I was not going to allow somebody to take my position. You put that cheap stuff back on the Walmart shelf. I'm not saying that anything <laughs> went on Walmart, but you know. So somebody's asking a question about where's Rand- where's Randall Wake. So I I have. I have Nick Foles at number five. Mm-hmm. I have Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, or Tommy Thompson at number four. Mm-hmm. My number three is Ron Jaworski. Okay. That's my number three. Because my Jaws, I believe, you know, first of all, just to survive Dick Vermeil <laughs> is mm-hmm. awesome. Just to, just to survive Dick Vermeil. No, 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 and- no, 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 no. See, see, 
So you're thinking you're thinking just to be able to do what he did versus a Lawrence Taylor versus a uh, a uh, a vaunted uh Redskins uh then Redskins defensive line featured Charles Mann and Dexter Manley and uh Oh those cats were bad yeah. and and it just do see uh well, you know yeah I commend I commend them but it but it's like uh but he, he led he led him to the other Super Bowl you mentioned as well. Well you yeah know? he got to the Super Bowl lost against the Raiders um but but Jaws was I mean and his you know when you look at his record he, he was just sixty nine wins sixty nine <laughs> losses and one start one uh, tie, but he, he started sixteen games five seasons in a row out of right. out of the time he was with the Eagles uh, right. thirty five hundred twenty nine yards twenty seven cool. touchdowns twelve interceptions, so I mean but Jaws was phenomenal I yeah. mean he had some great targets you know that's the Wilbur Montgomery era yeah. the 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 Wilbur Howard Carl Michael Wilbur, era. Yeah. You know, Jaws is in the Eagles Hall of Fame. But Jaws, Jaws, the reason I have Jaws at number three is because I believe during that era, Dick Vermeil, Ron Jaworski, Harold <laughs> Carmichael, Wilbur Montgomery, uh, eventually Mike Quick came along. Bill um, Berge. Bill Berge, yes. <laughs> those those cats started. Carl Harrison, the Eagles, no, sorry. Yeah, they started with the Eagles the era that the Eagles are in now, that's when it started for me in oh, yeah. terms of the Eagles being on the map and being each and every year, everybody, you know, in the league, you know, having to know that the Eagles are going to be a competitive team. Well, I believe know, that era started with Dick Vermeil and uh, Ron Jaworski. Now you, you may not know this, but I had never seen the Eagles play until the uh, 1979 season or the 80, when they went into the 1980 Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So they played the out, the, the, then the Arizona Cardinals were the same, they were big red. The Arizona Cardinals were big Arizona, red. Arizona, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, they were St. Louis Cardinals. They were called, right. That's mm -hmm. why they were called the big red. The Red Birds was our baseball team. And then the, uh, and I grew up there. So, you know, watching the Pat Tillies and the, the uh, uh, the Jim Hart's and the Neil Lomaxes and the uh, and and, uh, and the Roy and the uh, Roy what's it what's it Roy Gray and the mm -hmm. uh, Stump Stump Mitchells one 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 week the Eagles I had never seen them play the Eagles the Eagles came down there with Jaws and uh and Harold Carmichael and scored fifty two points to our nothing and that's what then I knew I had a new team. <laughs> it's like, well, you know who on those teams who doesn't get you who you don't hear. I mean, you hear Howell Carmichael's name mentioned. It's our, it's our buddy. A, well, not but you know our buddy. You know our buddy. You rest his that? soul. Huh? He was a coach with us. What's his name? Who? Uh, Howell? Who are you talking about? Not talking about the other receiver that was with Earl. Oh, you talking about um Mike Quick? No, no. It was it was another older guy who helped Earl Carmichael out. Who Howell Jackson? No, I'm not a guy who coached with us at uh, Robbinsville. Oh, um, say his name. I can't think of his name. He's like, I can't oh, think of his rest name. Rest his soul. Yeah, yeah. You tell you telling me, and you can't think of his name either. Ben. I can't think of his name, but you're right. Yeah, ben, um, ben, Ben. His first name was Ben. I know. I can't think of his name, man. Oh, that's, that's bad. It'll come to me. Yeah. But but what I was going to say was that um, Wilbur Montgomery, man, was a beast back then. That's. In that team, mm -hmm. the time when Jaworski was at his, you know, at his best and Vermeil was the hot news. You know, I was living and growing up in New Jersey, but man, I used to watch Wilbur Montgomery. Not that I was a big football fan, but I just remember Wilbur Montgomery being unstoppable, man. Well, he was what, a, what, what kind of fan were you? What kind of fan was I? I wasn't yeah, no, really. No, not when you was growing up. What, what, what was your what, what was your bag? I didn't I didn't follow sports like that. I played sports, but I didn't follow sports. No, I was sport Billy. Yeah, I, I, I was not. I was not a big sports follower. I mean, I, I would. I would see, you know, I would watch some of the games some of the time, but it wasn't something that was, you know, something I had to do every week. But when I did watch the Eagles, you know, the one that stood out to me was Wilbur Montgomery on those teams. Yes, Ron Jaworski yeah. was the quarterback, so obviously they were saying his name a lot. But Wilbur was the one man. They mm -hmm. ran that cat. He just. He was just productive all the time. Yeah, and they ran him to death. Random yeah. death, but yes, but, but that's but, my buddy. Um, that's my buddy. I love him. You love him. I yes, love him my too. Guy. That's my guy. So number real. three is Ron Jaworski. My number two, and it's probably your number two. And somebody's been asking about this. Who was asking about it? where? Where? 
uh, J.D. Stroh was asking, where is Randall ranked? Randall's ranked number two. Mm-hmm. I got Randall Cunning. Run- I got it. I got it. Flop. Okay, well, you got a flop. That's okay. No, you, but it's a reason I have a flop. And I'll, okay, I'll well, you give your reason. Um, I'm I'm just looking at you know what I remember, what I know, because again, I played same time as Randall when 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 I was an All American in college. Randall was an All American. I can remember taking a picture with Randall at the Kodak, Kodak All American banquet. I bet there was one greasy moment. Jerry kills everywhere. But but he <laughs> <laughs> but he was an All American punter out of you. An LV. Yeah. He was an all-American. He was not an all-American quarterback. He was an all-American punter. He was running people or making people yeah. crazy because of his running uh-huh. ability. He could also punt. You know, his daughters are high yeah. jumpers. He could also punt. Yeah. And so he would get the ball in punt formation. You didn't know what he was going to do. And the funniest thing about him is who he threw, you know who caught 20 of his passes? Who's Keenan, that? You? Keenan McCardo. Not Keenan, Keenan McCardo. Ma- get out of here, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, 20 catches. Yeah, wow. in, one, in, one, in one college game. Wow. So, so listen, they didn't know what he was going to do as, as a punter because he would either punt it or he run it or he throw it. Right. So uh, that was my senior year, which was his junior year in college. He was an All-American punter. He was the Kodak All-American punter, but he came in the league, obviously. And Randall was ahead of his time, man. Um, he, he, he actually started this whole regime, this whole era, that's uh, why the court, of the running quarterback. That's, That's why, why you have him number one. I but, have him number one because if he doesn't get into the Hall of Fame, then there's no there's, they can't put Donovan in. It's right. Like, it's like he needs to get in first. It's right. like we, we were talking about it earlier, and I don't want to make you go off because you only have a few minutes. Um, <laughs> you can make me go off. <laughs> it's like, but the, the, the thing is, is, is like you have to put the person who changed the game in. He changed the game. He changed, he changed, the, changed game. the game. Is they called the, Sports Illustrated called him the ultimate weapon. Yeah, and it's like yeah. he, and it's like nobody and nobody knows this either. And the only reason I know it is because I, I'm always around listening. It's like they once he got to the, just think if he got the same tutelage that he got once he got to Minnesota, and 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 when he, when he got to Minnesota because he did because here they didn't really teach him anything when he was here. They said go out and make a couple of plays. Well, was, Buddy, Buddy Ryan was here. Buddy was a defensive I know, coach. I, I know. Was an offensive coach. I know. But this, but this is what I'm saying. How they, how how things go is like, just think because they kind of stumped this growth. So remember when uh, we, by the time you got here, they had already got, they had already uh, got rid of them. Right. right. And the, the thing was, is that this is what this is the part that I don't think you knew. The reason why they got rid of it because they never taught them how to read a defense or anything. They just told oh, no. him to go out and yeah, make the play. But, but you could tell like, that, but you could tell that the way he played. He wasn't reading defenses. He was he was focused in on the number one read. If it wasn't there, he was just making it happen with his feet. Yeah. And, and they're playing and then street ball. I'm sure some of the cats, Barnett and all those guys that were playing wide receiver, they were talking to uh talking we're gonna, to uh Randall. We're gonna have to give fast Freddie uh, uh Arkansas, Arkansas Red on here. Okay, uh, one, one uh, but I'm sure they were talking on the sidelines. Listen, when you start running to the right, this is what I'm going to do. When you start running this way, that's what I'm going to. How about how about, the long, how about the longest pass in Eagles history? The hey. one, the one, the one that he, the one that he threw it out of the end zone to Fred to Fred uh, Freddie Barnett. Not yards. Yeah, <laughs> he could throw the ball the distance of the field. Can you imagine? He, and I'm not even going to give his stats because we don't have time. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to number one. But can you imagine everybody who's listening right now? Yeah. Uh, Shabaka, I think that's how you say the name. Nisi Bates, Pro Fan Talk, JD Stro. Uh, who else is on here? Uh, who else do I see? I see, I see Marcus, I see Joy, I see Peter I see Evans. Peter Evans. Can you I, all I see I see uh Nick Nick. Nick. Yeah, I see Nick. Nice. Uh, I see Neeb, everybody. Nick Neeb, I guess that's how you say that. He said, uh, listen, can you imagine all of you who are watching right now who will watch this? Can you imagine or just imagine? Randall Cunningham playing in today's game. Can you ima- imagine that cat playing in the game today? But you, but what you, he would be able to accomplish in today's game? But it you, wouldn't you, even be fair, man. But do, it but wouldn't do, even be fair. But do, do, you, do you not understand the part? And Nick, uh, I, I, I didn't, Nick, uh, Nikki, I'm sorry. Uh, she, uh, she said it for the pronunciation. Pronounce, oh, Nikki, I'm sorry. Yeah, Did Nikki, I say it wrong? Nikki, yeah. Nikki Bates. Uh, okay. But uh, just think 
if when he got it and when he came here, he got the proper tutelage. Well, yeah, you, but, but again, he was ahead of his time. So no, no, he, no, no. But even even then, it's like because I learned this from uh, from Slick Vic, Mike Mike Vic. When I talked to him, he said the the worst thing that ever happened to him when is when they fired Dan Reeves because Dan Reeves held him accountable for things. Right, right. He's right, like with, yeah. the, with, the new, with the new coach that came in, <clears throat> they weren't teaching him anything. Like but Dan Reeves, Reeves, but Dan yeah. Reeves knew how to coach quarterbacks as right. well. Dan Reeves understood offense and knew how to take a quarterback and to train him and train mm-hmm. his eye and train him to make the proper reads and train him to make uh, pre-snap see, reads but, of defense. But yeah. do you not, now you see why he's number one. Who Randall? Yeah. I, I well, love, five. I love five. I'm, I'm I love, going. I love. I'm going based on performance. My number love, one. My five. number one is number five. I love. I love five, but without without number twelve, there is no number five. <laughs> and it's just, it's just. Well, it's I don't know that because he's not five's daddy. So you know. Yeah, he's not. He's not. But if if he but he if he you think he's they're going to draft him number one overall if they hadn't seen what they had seen from uh from Randall, and it, and then on, on top of that. And but then, get, but then Randall went to the he's part of the uh when they when they went to you know when he in uh in Minnesota when uh Bill uh when Brian Billy got him and taught him some stuff, right? Well, then he had a better career in or or yeah, I think he had he put up better numbers in Minnesota than he did while he was here. But people, but Randall's career here in Philadelphia was very, very exciting, but it, in terms of success. In wins yes. and accomplishments, it was minimal. It was exciting. They had some playoff victories, but yeah, and, they didn't and, go and, anywhere. They didn't they, do anything. They won some playoff games, but the fog bowl is what killed it all. Well, the fog bowl, <laughs> and that's what he <laughs> he's remembered by the fog bowl. But he he threw for four hundred some yards in the fog bowl. Exactly, and you were saying you made so my point. so, but still, but that's one. It's one game. It's just one game. Yeah, but you, but you remember it, though, don't you? It's one game, and we're going yeah, yeah. and we're going based on. Performance as a Philadelphia Eagle, not based on the totality of their career. Uh, that that's why number. That's why yes. That's so, why we're so going on we, based on the performance as an Eagle. You know what? You know what? No, you know why Randall is number one. Have Have you ever seen him throw up in the game? Mm-hmm. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, so you're gonna you're gonna dismiss Donovan five because he threw up in the game because he got what? You don't know if he no, got he, nervous or you know if he threw up because he ate the wrong thing or because he had too much water or what. You don't know why he threw up. It's not because he's a punk. No. My, 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 if you want my... You say, I, you, you're, you're will, saying I he will, threw up because he got scared? Was he scared? I will let my mom tell you why he threw up. Okay, was, what, what would your mom say? What would your mom say? He was out the night before. Oh, he was out the night before. And, okay, and, that's and, your... That's and, your and, and, no, no, but and... If you don't know anything about when we played in the state of Florida, he threw up every time we were there. Go look at all the games. Go back and look at the Jacksonville game. We were running a two-minute drill. Okay. They had to move but- the huddle. Hold on. They had to move the huddle. And, he, and Jay Jack, and, uh, Jamal Jack, Jay Jack will attest to this. He said, he said, all of a sudden he came in the huddle and he started throwing up. So they shimmy the huddle over to get away from, from his, <laughs> him tossing his cookies. Playing against Miami. He's under the center. He, Listen, he, has to, he has to come back, and he's tossing his cookies. Let me let me give you this. It's six. We're, we're three minutes over. Let me give you yeah. why. Let me give you why he's my number one. Mm-hmm, all right. Mm-hmm, he lost mm-hmm. the Super Bowl to New England, but 2004, his first QB in NFL history to finish the season with over 30 TD passes and fewer than 10 interceptions, 64 percent completion rate, 38. 3,875 yards passing, 31 TDs, eight interceptions, a 104.7 passer rating. 2008, he lost the NFC Championship, yes, but he set a career high passing later on. This later on, at 3,960. Well, yeah, yeah, Donovan McNabb is the winningest quarterback in Eagles history, 92 wins. Donovan McNabb is the most, has the most pass attempts in franchise history, 47. You know what it's me? He has the most completions in franchise history, <laughs> 2,801. Most passing yards in fran- franchise history, 32,873. Most TD passes in franchise history, 216. Led the NFL in QB wins between 2000 and 2004. That's why Donovan is my number one. 
We lost a game six to three <laughs> with him quarterbacking. You're going back to that. You, you bring up old stuff. You went back to that. You said that earlier. I know, but he he was a quarterback. <laughs> and he wasn't a rookie. You sure it didn't have anything to do with the play calling? Who was who was the coach? You had a problem with Andy Reid, right? Maybe it was Andy's fault. They did it Weren't together. Weren't you blaming Andy for stuff earlier? They did it together. They did it <laughs> <Not, bro. laughs> together. Big together. dog, I ain't fooling with you, man. <laughs> together, I together, I ain't fooling they, with you, man. <laughs> together, they helped ruin my life. No. Together. <laughs> Listen, y'all, this is another <laughs> episode of Vetted. We thank you for being with us today. <laughs> House you. and I will be back next week. <laughs> same time, same place, same channel right here, A2D Radio, to holler at you. <laughs> holler you a trip, man. <laughs> to holler at y'all again. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. This is the 4th of July weekend. Y'all don't yes. drink too much. Don't drink and drive, please. Take care of yourselves. Be Look, safe with the fireworks. Careful. Yes, be safe with the fireworks. All of that. We'll see you next week here on Vet.